Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke with Reverend Yutaki Yamada. Today is Thursday, the 31st of March, or the 29th of February in the 10th year of Chong Yul Guk. Let's begin, as always, with a bow to our Heavenly Parent and True Parents, Hyungbei. Haro. And let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajon men se o chonilguk chuin uri kajogun cham sangil chunshimago meil chuchetok chonsan segewa te sanchok chisan sege toil kanghe chonjin chok palchonil choksin halkosil men se hanaida. Family pledge number five. Our family, the owner of Chong Yul Guk, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on true love. And uh, I'd like to ask uh, Rex if you could offer the opening prayer, please. Let's pray. Our most loved and parents, and our dearest to pray to heaven, eight men can't. Good morning. Today is uh, Thursday, 31st of March, 2022, and 29th of February, in the 10th of Chengduk. New day, new realities, new challenges, Father, but Father, have so hope. And I'm so grateful that with you, with the absolute good and blessings from the Spirit of our Father, we have a successful and great day, Father. Father, now we stand before you for our Heaven Holy Community, Hoshinia Hundokwe, to receive more inspiration, more wisdom from uh, Reverend Yutaka and also for other families who give their ideas, Father. We pray that from beginning to the end of our uh, Chong Song Father, we together with you enjoy and Father make a new determination for the day. Thank you once again, Father Ricardi. Thank you. <laughs> collective name and Father in our name, to Father Masok Masok, Blessed Santo Family, Aju. Aju, thank you. Oh. Uh, let's uh, offer a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka as he shares this morning. Thank you. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining this morning from the K. Now is also the beautiful morning. So let's put our chanson and heart to our heavenly parents and true parents. So three months has passed in 2022. What goals have you set? and challenged yourself during this period. At each milestone, we should reflect well on ourselves and to make a new beginning. This is really uh, very important things and how to take care of ourselves internally and externally. How is your health situation? Are you fine, your health? We have to check ourselves internal health, external health together. So our spiritual health, when we read the God's word, offer the prayer, or a chosen condition, or to do the frontline mission in every place. So when we do those kind of spiritual or providential activity, how about our feeling? Are my feelings toward them joyful or struggling, exciting or suffering? We must diagnose them carefully. This is really important. So individual level, family level, even our community level, national level, how ourselves. So always diagnose our feeling 
internal, external, and our situation. So this time, April, uh, there will be the Tonic leaders meeting in Korea, and they are asking to each nation to prepare the two years report from 2020 to 2022, and also to prepare for 60 months plan for for tower 2027 so each activity or each providential things is actually even uh each program providence activity is small things but in order to fulfill the final vision and goal those small johnson condition or small achievement accumulate and finally we can fulfill we can reach the goal tower 2027 or establish the turning cook and fulfillment of the heavenly unified korea and the world that's why without thinking without any kind of preparation final goal or those achievement never happened that's why in ourselves centering on our heavenly parents and three parents we have to plan well we have to think well prepare well and practice well in our place this is really important and necessary necessary things then we can find the development finally we can gain the achievement so always reflect ourselves and plan for future and go for together this is very uh, important for ourselves so now already three months so let's reflect well and prepare for the next months. So today also let's read our mother's word in Chun Sung Gyeon. Global unity through through parents. So yesterday part, the mother is explaining and sharing her message. How every parents is was guiding for each of us and nurturing us and raising us up how our true father and true mother have invested to to each of us to raise us up and to guide us up until this time period so now we are receiving many kind of education and guidance and now we are standing as filial son and daughters in order to fulfill god's will and god's vision and also have a travel messiah mission and to create the environment and finally we try to reach the 7.8 billion people now so we have to love and guide and witness our people in the cane realm and also we have to love and guide and witness our able realm our family physical family physical brothers and sisters parents and the relatives we have to uh, find them mother said now era was changing that's why she said don't be afraid now we have to recognize we are living in a new era and we are standing as the tribal messiah so we have to stand strongly in front of heaven and earth and go forward to proclaim and guide the peoples so let's read the mother's word so please read mrs now the people of today need to be different. You have met the true parents. You have received the marriage blessing from true parents. You are no longer wild olive trees, but true olive trees. This means that you are now in a position that has no relation to the poor. Is it okay for only you to be in such a position? Heavenly parents wish and true parents wish is to bless all 7 billion people of the world as heavenly parents' children. If they know of the truth, what will happen to today's people? They will become one. If that happens, the unified world, heaven on earth, will automatically be achieved. Thank you very much. So we have to look at ourselves well and reflect ourselves. So I want to ask you, before meeting three parents and after meeting three parents have we changed or transformed well or not before receiving blessing and after receiving blessing 
have we changed well or same? What do you think? Do you find some differences before receiving blessing and after receiving blessing or same? Many differences. Ah, yes. What kind of differences did you find? I'm more patient. <laughs> yes. Well, that is big differences, right? Yes. So anyway, I think each person have a different story. So mother said, after receiving blessing, blessing, our position is totally changed. Our lineage is no more Satan's lineage. After receiving blessing, we are no more Satan's child. We became the God child, God's lineage, and God's son and daughters. This is the value of blessing. This is value of true parents. Maybe some of you are not receiving blessing yet, but this is the value of blessing. Our second generation is preparing for blessing. So how do we recognize and do we know about these differences is very important. So people say first generation and second generation is different. Do you think first gen and second gen is different or same? When we see them, when we see us, first gen and second gen, the starting point is different. First gen starting point is from the root of Satan or Satan's lineage. And how about the second generation? Second gen's root is from God's lineage. Then how about the blessed family and second generation? Is this different or same? If first, even first gen, if first gen receive the blessing, then first gen lineage is becoming also God's lineage. So do you think first gen, blessed first gen and second gen is different or same? When we see the lineage, breast family, first, first breast family, first gen breast family and second generation is same. Because already you receive God's blessing. Already your lineage was changed. Your lineage is already God's lineage. And second generation is also the God's lineage. That's why second gen and first gen, breast first gen is also the same value. So these things we have to understand. So now mother is emphasizing to give the blessings to the tribal messiahship. When we give the blessing to the people and people receive the blessing and to change their lineage, then they become God's children and God's lineage and God's child like second generation. That's why if you are still Satan's lineage after receiving blessing and second gen will coming from you, what do you think? Both of your lineage is different than is that right way or are there natural things or not? So second gen will be born without original or God's lineage because parents receive the blessing. Parents doesn't have original lineage or no, original sin anymore. That's why second generation is coming and coming without original sin. So our value as the breast center family, our position, really we have to think and we have to see again each of you you are really precious. You are children of God. You are the son and daughter of God with God's lineage. And mother said, what's the purpose of your life? What's the purpose of receiving God's lineage or blessing? This is only for yourself to be, create a happy family, to have a God's family or either family, heaven's wish or Every parent's wish is not only this level. In order for you, the reason to give the blessing to each of us is also to multiply this blessing to another brothers and sisters in the world until 7.8 billion people. This is the heaven's three parents' wish and three parents' wish. So mother said, heavenly parents' wish and three parents' wish is to bless all 7 billion people on the world as heavenly parents' children. That's why 
how we can deliver the message. If they could recognize, if they receive blessing, then they will totally change. So mother said, if they know of the truth, what will happen to today's people? They will become one. If that happens, the unified world, heaven on earth will automatically be achieved. That's why mother is continuously sharing and mentioning and encouraging us to recognize our position as the blessed central family, as God and God's son and daughters. So let's read next part. Please read. However, you who have received the blessing, pastors who have received the calling through, you have a responsibility. True parents cannot fulfill this responsibility for you. You need to do it. True parents have shown you, practice it, and prepared a foundation of victory. Thus, you only need to fulfill your responsibility by following us exactly. Do you understand? I am saying that you must not stop because one family is blessed. Yes, thank you very much. This is really important things. True parents have a bigger or biggest mission and they want to invest to each of us. They want to love, they want to give, they want to embrace, and they want to visit you directly or physically one by one. They want to visit the house to house and meet you and listen to your situation and really comfort you, encourage you, and really to be joyful today, a joyful together. But when we see our three parents physically, three parents have only one body. That's why what do you think? He, true father and true mother, they have a physical body. How can they visit to all our blessed family houses, our brother and sister's houses, even to visit the 7.8 billion people to give the message and guide and share their heart? That's why the, our responsibility or role, who receive blessing first, is really important. To the parents want to do many things to visit the people, but they cannot do physically. That's why we are here as a representative of true parents. So we will do behalf of true parents. We will love behalf of true parents. We will invest behalf of true parents. Heavenly Torah Messiah, UPF activities, youth activity or women's activity, those activity, we are involving and we are doing this kind of providence or activities, but actually we should not do just with our individual point of view or individual position. We are doing behalf of two parents. We are going, we are conducting behalf of two parents. So we have to understand what's the heaven's wish and what's our individual role to be given by our heavenly parents and true parents. So centering on this vision, already true parents prepared the old foundation on this earth so we can recognize and we can utilize those things. So we have to have a confidence. We have to have conviction and also we have to have those kind of the spiritual heavenly dignity in order to conduct all the activities. So father, mother said, true parents have shown you, practiced it and prepared a foundation of victory. Thus, you only need to fulfill your responsibility by following us exactly. When we see the foundation of true parents, how big, and how um, many things they created now. Yesterday we had the meeting, Oceania leaders meeting, and also Levan Santos mentioning his realization. When we see the father's foundation, actually they, through father, created all things for us. Already we have a university, already we have a school, even we have a media newspaper company and also artists or little angels. And we have a many kind of business network and social network. 
we can utilize also the United Nations Network and the religious group and women's group, everything, whatever we try to do, all foundations are already created by our true parents. And just we utilize that in order to fulfill God's will and God's vision. That's why once again, we, when we see our true parents' investment and achievement and those vision, how much great and how much big and how blessing we are receiving now. So we can really recognize that. So please read. Educating people will help overcome natural disasters and all the things that are happening around the world. Whether I am in Korea, Japan or America, I ask members to unite and, edu and educate others so that these problems can be resolved. This is fulfilling one's responsibility as a tribal messiah. You need to tell others. There must be no one who does not know, especially since they are living at the time, at the same time as true parents. By doing this, you will live freely in the eternal world. Yes, thank you very much. That's why education is important. Divine principle of education and God's word, even education of the life on this earth. So when we see our three great blessings, there are three great blessings. One and also purpose of the life. One is the individual perfection, and family perfection, and perfect of the dominion. So we have to become true men and true women. And we have to create true family. And in the society, we have to become the professional to the each field. Some is business field, some is lawyers, some is teachers, and in several education, several press, several fields, we have to become professional. That's why in each period in the education and in the living area, we have to become the professional person to educate the people also and live for the people also, and live for the world also. So mother said, there must be no one who does not know, especially since they are living at the same time as true parents. By doing this, you will live freely in the eternal world. So this is our target, how we can educate to the people. Okay, please read. Our life as blessed families is the greatest blessing in all of the 6,000 year history of fallen human beings. You must not keep it to yourselves. There is a future for us and for those of the second and third generations. Depending on how you expand your environment, your descendants can be freer. Isn't it the parents' heart to hope that their children will live a better life than they have? Hence, for the sake of your loving children, you must fulfill your responsibilities before you go to the next world. Yes, thank you very much. So Mada is emphasizing about the importance of current era. We are living together with true parents. And now current decision or current direction for future by true parents. This will be decided for the future direction and future achievement and future world itself. So now it's important to create a foundation for future. Through this achievement, through fulfillment God's will in current situation with true mother, true parents, then our next generation, our children, our grandchildren, our descendants, their life will be decided whether they will live the peaceful world together centering on God's will, God's vision, and God's tradition, or they will stay continuously under suffering world, suffering culture, and suffering society. That's why Mada is again and again emphasizing how much now this time moment is important. That's why Mada said, depending on how you expand your environment, your descendants can be freer. 
isn't it the parents hard to hope that that their children will live a better life than they have hence for the sake of your loving children you must fulfill your responsibility before you go to the next world so mother is mentioning that we have to fulfill responsibility before we go to the next world next world is spiritual world right so mother is also talking that before we go to the spiritual world we have to fulfill our responsibility but i'm sure this world is not only talking to ourselves true mother is continuously talking to true mother herself before she go to the spiritual world she have to fulfill she want to conclude and she want to prepare the beautiful foundation and beautiful world for our next generation that's why through knowing our true mother's heart we also go together and we will go forward to fulfill vision together so real mother is sharing those heart deeply all the time so let's see the word of chon song gyon so the father is mentioning through chon song gyon about three great subject partner principle and also fulfillment of family ideal and to become the true parent to become the true teacher and true owner and we have to become those existence substantially and these things start from our family and tribe and races and nation and world cosmos and also god's level so we could recognize again we are living under those vision and wishes so when we see about god's position what do you think when we see the oceania nation we could see many some the tribal culture right and i know our reverend city is also chief right in your tribe so when we see in the oceania or iran nation there are many chief and the tribal system so one the under one chief there are many family and many children so chief is loving all the families and children and brother and sisters as own children and to take look after them and take care of them and guide them so this position is looks like similar position like god god is kind of the great chief of human society to take care and love people and embrace people beyond the individual family tribe races and national boundary this is god try to love and embrace everyone but because of human fault the great chief was kicked out from the village from the groups and now nobody could recognize great chief's effort investment and suffering before and even existing itself that's why people is struggling each other fighting each other and judging each, each other that's why god try to create again build up again the new foundation in order to welcome them back under our heavenly parents and our god so this is now current providence so god continuously guiding us and to create the original ideal nation and the world so let's read this please read look at your body and mind isn't your original mind to be pity it stands in the position of god it represents all of your ancestors your forebearers your original mind represents your teachers as well as your nation and sovereigns yet how long have you disrespected and mistreated it as the center of the universe your original mind stands in the position of the subject partner of true love as your true parent true teacher and true owner it has sacrificed over and over to save you as one person living on this earth is in this soul though it sacrificed so much it has not once complained yes thank you when we see the bible bible say god uh, chased adam and eve out from the garden of eden 
but this is actually the opposite situation because of human fall god himself actually was <laughs> kicked out cannot stay with people anymore that's why god wa could not stay and live together always god try to love but god wa <clears throat> ignore the people ignored by people and even people could not recognize our god <clears throat> existence but continuously god try to invest and guide through our original mind and conscience and love and guide to the original way and original direction so even conscience even original mind how much original mind was ignored continuously every moment our original mind is talking us guiding us but how many times are we following how many times are we ignoring so even god through guiding through original mind and even ignored but continuously invest and invest and invest without doing any kind of complaint and any kind of uh resentment things original mind saying okay please read yeah we drag around and treat it continually with contempt presuming it to be dead yet whenever you harbor an evil thought for example going out in the early morning darkness and stealing something it comes alive and calls you to your senses alerting you don't do that you scoundrel haven't you constantly manipulated your mind despite your having done so it is in the position of your parent teacher and owner yes thank you very much that's why god is always trying to be with us through our mind how many times can we can you recognize the word of original mind can you feel every day how about now can you feel some original mind voice what are original mind talking now or voice of evil mind is bigger than original mind how many what how many my how many voice can you recognize in your heart one mind one voice or two voice if you can recognize one voice then maybe you are already perfect person or you are totally perfect evil person right if you can hear only one voice that's why you have to recognize two voices then we can compare one is god's voice and one is evil voice if you have only one voice please seriously pray you are perfect person or you are perfect evil person so anyway father said despite you are having done so it is in the position of your parent teacher and owner so really heavenly parents is guiding us so please read in the original homeland we attend god as the king god is the king of the universe the nation the tribe and the family god is the teacher of the universe the nation the tribe and the family god is the parent of the universe the nation the tribe and the family this is the teaching of the three great subject partners this principle includes the original essence of love which is living for the sake of others and giving love without expecting anything in return therefore the three great subject partners themselves represent heaven okay one more slide last slide please read if if you could embody the teaching of the three great subject partners that would be ideal yet even if you are unable to embody them all if you can stand only in the position of a true parent the teacher will stand on your left and the owner on your right if you fulfill just one of the three anything will be all right everything will be all right whether you become a true parent a true teacher or a true owner if you stand in one of these positions you will have no problem registering in the kingdom of heaven each one of them unites all three 
Yes, thank you very much. That's why true parents or God having those kind of vision and wishes to each of us, showing us. So we have to recognize and we have to welcome God and we have to live with attending God, even we know or not. That's why Father said in, in the original homeland, we attend God as the king. This one is... God, God is the king of the universe, the nation, the tribe, and the family. God is the teacher of the universe, the nation, the tribe, and the family. God is the parent of the universe, the nation, the tribe, and the family. So this one, one page before. So that's why we have to welcome God. We have to live together with God. We have then God. And we also have to become those existence like to the parent, to the teacher, and to the owner. So today we share about mother message and father's message. So dearly, God is existing and God is guiding all of us and dearly teaching all the moment how we can recognize, how we can understand, and how we can share this message to people of the world. This is really heaven's wish. That's why. We are living here with receiving blessing. We are following true parents, but once again, each of us, each of you are really precious existence. We are standing not as the individual. We are here as the representative of our true parents, representative of God. So those dignity, those wishes together. So we recognize ourselves and we will live and we will go forward. So today is the beautiful day, March 31. So already end of month and tomorrow, new month will start. Let's plan well, prepare well. Surely God will special guidance to each of you through our daily life. So let's listen and let's get the guidance and let's create a beautiful moment. So once again, thank you for joining this morning, Hundoke. It's a great time. Kamsamida. Thank you very much, Reverend Yutaka, for always sharing and always being uh, so vibrant and uh, passionate in your, your presenting uh, to us each morning. So we uh, very much appreciate. Uh, today is uh, an open session, so uh, I have some reflections. I was just uh, reflecting on... Uh, uh, yeah, we are true olive trees uh, because of the blessing. Yeah, we are true olive trees, and and uh, yeah, that has no relation to the fall. Wow. Uh, yet, I mean, in that comparison about yeah, are we? Uh, thinking of uh, our original mind, you know, our conscience, our our our, our internal you know, parent and teacher and owner, our our internal guide you know, to what is truly uh, belongs to God, uh, and then we have the blessing that says we are true olive trees. So, uh, uh, if the thing is. We came from a fallen side, and then we joined uh, God's side, and we had uh, many habits. And that's why Reverend Yutaka said, "You know, how have you changed over the time? Have we moved out of the habits that we, you know, uh, sort of created and sort of found ourselves with?" You know, uh, like yeah, you know, we all come from different homes. We all have different parents, and 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 the way we we all didn't receive uh, love the way God intended, and it it uh, caused uh, uh, faults in in our, ourselves. Some we recognise, uh, some we uh, challenge, some we still don't even see, and and very often our children and people who are close to us point out uh, aspects of ourselves that we we thought we were better or we thought we didn't have. Uh, 
or or realize that uh, wow, I'm still stuck in in a habit uh, that I I acquired when I was you know seven or eight years old and still haven't been able to move forward. And uh, uh, here we are with the blessing. And Father is saying, we are true olive trees and we have no relation to the fall. And yet uh, our growth uh, limit uh, is uh, still dominated by uh, the past, the ancestors, uh, effects the uh, you know all of those different four aspects of sin you know the uh, individual and inherited you know collective you know all, all of those parts uh, still affecting us when in reality uh, with the blessing uh, we should not let them uh, we are standing in a different position you know we are true olive trees we are connected to our and then Father explains you know, the way in which we do that. You know, that is to follow true parents exactly. Yeah? And, and, and so what are some of the attributes that true parents have? They, they never stop. They are always uh, proclaiming about heavenly parent and true parents and the blessing. And they are always actively blessing. Uh, and, and by doing that, uh, they are totally absorbed in the love of God. They are totally uh, are one with God. And uh, you know, here we are, uh, and we can make all sorts of excuses. Uh, and, uh, and we all know in some respect you know, where we are. Uh, but it's... Um, having uh, connections with each other and also honesty with each other and and uh and hopefully uh our uh, brothers and sisters and and family members you know both physically and and within our movement have the uh, uh the courage to tell one another uh, some home truths <laughs> i think sometimes we need other people to tell us oh you should have done this, this would have been better. Uh, or, or did you consider you know, uh, trying to uh, uh, really uh, step out of your comfort zone? Because uh, you know, when I keep reflecting on that, you know, we are true olive trees. Okay, we're blessed. So we actually are at, at a different level. And, and God is waiting for us to carry out our responsibility. Uh, and uh, and we do have no relation to the fall, even though the fall is there and affects many people. But from uh, God's point of view, we're on God's side, and and ever since we got the blessing, we are on God's side. And yet, uh, I recognise in myself, I I see many times I I act as if I'm not on God's side, or I I'm not. Uh, uh, fully uh, appreciative of the fact that the, the transfer of lineage has taken place and, uh, and that, you know, uh, realise <laughs> uh, it's time to uh, absorb deeply that, you know, we are true olive trees. And, uh, yeah, but, so that was some thoughts I had when uh, listening to Reverend Yutaka and, and recognizing uh, we have to self-analyze and diagnose ourselves and and probe ourselves and to you know, really uh, you know, do that on a daily basis to to, to allow our internal you know, parent, teacher, and owner to guide us. So uh, thank you, and open it up to others to uh, thank you. Uh, yes, Doug, go ahead. Yeah, that, that word uh, education came to my mind this morning. It's just a great word, you know. And uh, God designed us so that we have an original nature and we identify with the truth when we hear it or see it. So we have that to rely upon, you know. It's not so foreign to us. The, the hope of education and how to build that was on my mind 
uh, it had to do with um, how do you nurture it? And it's pretty simple, I think. Um, it can't be top down, it has to be ground up. So to build a groundswell of educated people in the world, a very simple uh, thought is that when you're young, you tend to like um, to get together with people who have common interests, like a club, everyone forms a club. You know, in New York, we had little gangs, you know, but there's a commonality. And well, one of the joys that I've had uh, for 50 years or 40 years is about energy, about water. You know, I ran into someone who taught me that there was a possibility of a water engine, an engine that runs on water. Wow, how exciting that was, you know. And but there was no verification of it. Over the years and the decades, this was not only made a little bit more known scientifically, but spoken of by true father, made relevant and made real to the point of amazing truth. God said, Father said that God is a God of abundance. He never does things without abundantly making it available to us. So here's the whole world fighting over oil. It has been for hundreds of years. But yet right in front of us, we're swimming in energy. It's water itself, you know. And True Father spoke of the time when the oil wars will be over and we will have energy based on water. So unbeknownst to mo many people, um, I'll cut this short. <laughs> Unbeknownst to many people, there are science tips, uh, advancements that are unknown. Lockheed Martin, Skunk Industries, Toyota have created little machines that can actually, at the point of propulsion, turn water into energy to fly jets, move boats, all kinds of things. So wouldn't that be interesting for a child in this world to learn about, you know? whether it's energy or politics or science or art, get kids with the older generation, three generations interested in clubs. If you like, you know, kids, you like movies, form a movie club, form a comic club, a sewing club. But we have eight pillars and we have eight pillars that need a groundswell of understanding. So, why not around each one of those eight pillars, one for each day of the week, maybe meet on Tuesdays about science or the first Tuesday of the month or every Tuesday or give an avenue for children and interested people to pursue education on the eight pillars so that we're not just only focused on one thing like religion, you know, we should be focused on religion, government, politics entertainment. There we get to have, instead of one leg that we're standing on, we're standing on two legs. The more clubs you have participation in, you're standing on three legs. You're eventually standing on eight legs, and that's a very long table, creating a base of sharing all our interests. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Uh, Jacinta, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say I was really struck by what Reverend Utaka said when he said after the fall, God was kicked out of the garden. It wasn't Adam and Eve. And it's just really blown my mind because I, I probably need to process it more and more, but I just feel emotionally very different all of a sudden about it. You know, like, is this something I can really share? Um, sort of shock share with with Christians around me, you know. I just feel it's so, um, I don't know, I feel a very powerful thing. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Jacinda. Thank you. Uh, yes, Catherine, go ahead. Um, I was showing a book. Um, it's called Nuku. It's about 100 Indigenous women, not just New Zealanders, but the different Pacific Islanders as well. And I was reading the book to find out who would be, who I could send mother's book to and reading about their biography. And each one is so proud of their heritage um, and what they are doing. And they're women from all different walks of life. 
And I was thinking about my own heritage. What am I? I'm a bits and pieces of everything. I haven't got some dif different, you know, some, I'm not purely one thing. But these people are very, very proud of their heritage. It was my stepsister who's Danish and who is married to a Maori. <clears throat> she actually showed me the book. And so I got it from the library. And I said, you know, we were talking. And I said, well, the most important thing is that we are all basically children of God. God created all humankind. And so when when we're reading, when I've been reading through the book, I was thinking, gosh, what am I? Who am I? Actually, we're God's children. That's the most biggest thing that you could ever be. Blessed by true parents. And they have set the standard, the traditions and things like that. We've got the most precious gift to give to anybody there is. And just reading this book really confirms it. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Uh, yes, Silvana, go ahead. Good morning. <clears throat> I, something came to my mind, a memory of, uh, in relationship to what changed the, between before the blessing and after the blessing. I, a memory came back to mind. At the time of the blessing, uh, prior to the blessing, I was a center leader in that Orchard Road in Birmingham. It was a big, uh, a big center. Anyhow, the point is, I was a center leader, but I was really a pain to my own leader because I, I was okay to take care of the center, but I, I cannot do anything public, right? Very, very scared to speak up. And so my leader wanted me to give the Sunday service alternatively. There were two churches in Birmingham, but the other church leader was always giving the sermon. And my leader said, what are you doing one week each? And it took him months to convince me to give a sermon. And anyhow, he had to drag me around for anything that was outside of the center, anything that was speaking up in public. Okay, I, just, I couldn't do it. And, and then I was blessed. And then so soon after the blessing, I had this like a really strong, strong realization. Oh my God, now I am, I'm the daughter of true parents. I'm like an elder daughter now because I've been blessed. I can't continue to be dragged around by my leader. I need to stand on my feet and take responsibility, take initiative. As so I organized, uh, our, our team was made of about 30 members, you know, all doing home church. So we had a huge uh, uh, number of community contacts. And so I organized a public uh, talk. <laughs> a public event. I laugh because I can't believe I did it, to be honest. But anyway, I organized this public event. The hall was full. We, I wanted to share why we we're doing home church, what was True Parents' vision, and uh, we showed them a little video of the little angels. Anyhow, I did it. That's the, I probably spoke for about five minutes, <laughs> and the rest I was behind the scenes organizing and doing. But I felt so good because uh, I, at the time, prior to this, the leader was speaking, I'm sure he was speaking to me directly, but he was speaking in a general. Uh, mm -hmm. And he said how good it is for God and for the leaders for that matter, when somebody say, yes, I'll do it, without the need to, to be pulled to do things, to, to be ready, to be available, to, to say yes, is such a good thing. It gives the leader energy. and. And, and then after that, I tried to really be that kind of person. Just tried. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Silvana. Thank you, everyone. It's actually that time for us now to uh, share our, our unison prayer together. So I'll just share the screen. Uh, let's, let's offer our unison prayer.
Adieu, <coughs> adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.